welcome back dear students today we are going to start with part 3 of algorithms and flow charts in this part we will look at an few examples of algorithms and flow charts okay so let's start with it in the first example uh, the problem is we have to write an algorithm and we will we have to make a flow chart to calculate area of a circle okay now students in your mathematics or uh, geometry you have already studied that if this is a circle and this is a radius of that circle okay then to calculate this area occupied by this circle the entire area occupied by this circle the formula is pi r stands for radius okay pi r square okay or pi pi into r into r this is the formula for calculating the area of a circle okay so let's see an algorithm and flow chart for the same very easy see there are three steps the first step is read the values and store them in rad and pi now what is this rad and pi rad and pi are again two variables like a and b were two variables in the same manner this rad is a variable where we are going to store the value of radius of the circle and pi is the uh, pi is a variable where we are going to store the value of uh, value of pi which can be 3.14 or you can also take it 22 upon 7 so actually pi is a constant okay whose value does not change but even if we use a variable over here it won't make a difference because we know the value of pi okay we have studied it in previous class so the first step is to read the values and store them in two in rad and pi okay then the next is compute area of a circle with the help of this formula pi into radius into radius or pi into r into r okay pi r square okay and then the third step will be print the value of area of circle okay so this is a short algorithm for this let's look at the flow chart for the same see in the flow chart we always start with the start box okay then input box inside the input box we are going to input what value of input value of rad rad and pi okay then next flow line towards the down downwards direction we will calculate area of a circle in a processing box this is the processing box area of a circle is pi into r into r yes or no pi into rad into rad and then next step see this is the output box display the area of circle we can also write print area of a circle and in the end we will stop oh sorry and the end we will stop okay so this is the simple flow chart for calculating the area of a circle isn't it easy students let's take another example in the another example what is the question write an algorithm and make a flow chart to swap two numbers swap two numbers swap means what uh swap means what uh, suppose if suppose two people are sitting on two two different chairs okay so suppose there is a person a and there is a person b and this there are two chairs this chair is one chair number 1 okay and this is chair number 2 okay so suppose a is sitting on chair number 1 and b is sitting on chair number 2 so what if i swap their places that means i'll tell b to sit on chair number 1 and a to sit on chair number 2 this is called swapping okay so i have swapped their places in the same manner over here we are going to what is the question an algorithm and flow chart to make to swap two numbers 
okay so let's take a look at the algorithm see read the step one of the algorithm is read the two numbers and store them in two variables a and b okay read the two numbers and store them in two variables a and b okay then take a third number or read a third no variable which is called as c okay so we'll just take a third number which is called as c okay now students we have to interchange the values okay swapping means interchanging right so what are we going to do we are going to say that c is equal to a okay c is equal to a then we will say that a is equal to b and then we'll say c, b is equal to c see now what is happening students is that actually we are taking a third variable c okay and we are storing this value in this oh sorry we are storing the value we are taking a third variable c and we are storing the value a inside it whatever was the value we already read the value of a and we stored it inside a new variable c so whatever was value of a now it has become the value of c then what we'll do we will we will store store the value of b in a whatever value was there in b we will store inside the a okay and then we will store whatever value is inside the c in b so what will happen is that whatever value was in a was stored in c yes whatever value was in b now got stored in a that means b's value became a's value a's new value yes or no and whatever value was stored in c which value was stored b a was saved yes a's a's value was stored in c and now we are storing c's value in b so what happened at the end of the day that a's value became b's value and b's value became a's value so didn't we swap these two numbers yes or no and at the end what were what are in the last step what are we going to do we will print the values of a and b so this is how you swap the values of two number by using a third variable okay uh students when you study java you will learn programming on this swapping of two numbers so i hope you will remember this logic okay what did we do we simply took a third variable which was empty okay and we stored the value of a inside this third variable okay suppose a was 3 and b was 5 now we stored what 3 in c so c has become 3 now c is equal to 3 right then what did we do we a became empty empty na so what did we do we stored value of b uh b in a so b is 5 so this b which was 5 its value is stored in a so a's new value is 5 okay and c's new value is 3 okay now b is empty yes so what are we going to do we are going to store the value of c in b okay c in b okay so what is the value of c the value of c is 3 yes and its value got stored in b so b became 3 so didn't we swap b became 3 a became 5 yes or no so this is how we swap two numbers using a third variable okay so that was the algorithm let's talk about the flow chart okay so in the flow chart we will start with the start box okay then we will read the two numbers a and b okay then we'll take a third number c okay doesn't matter what it is okay now we are going to interchange using the same logic see we stored the value of a in c then we stored the value of b in a and then we'll in the end we'll store the value of c in b and this is the processing box okay and then this one oh sorry this one is the output box and then when we display 
or print a and b their values will be swapped and when our output is reached we will go to the stop box okay so this is how we swap two numbers okay the next example is write an algorithm and make a flowchart to check whether a number is even or not okay students how to find whether certain number is even or not okay now see to check whether any number is even or not there is a test what is that test we divide that number by 2 so if i want to check whether you know 7 is even or not okay you know that this is not an even number but how to verify it we divide it by 2 and see the remainder see if i divide this 7 by 2 what will come Seven, uh, 2 3 is a 6 and 1 so what is the remainder this thing remainder remainder is 1 okay if you divide any number by 2 and if the remainder is 1 that then then that number is an odd number okay if the remainder is 0 then that number is an even number for example if i take 16 okay okay if you want to know whether 16 is even or odd so what are we going to do we'll take 16 we'll divide it by 2 so 16 uh, 2 8 is a 16 yes or no what is the remainder 0 if the remainder is 0 then the number is even okay so this is a test to find whether a number is even or odd okay so let's take a uh, uh, we should uh, let's make a algorithm for this the first step in the algorithm is read the number which number the one which we want to find out whether it is even or odd uh, even or not okay so next step is check if number divided by 2 equal to equal to 0 over here equal to equal to 0 means what number divided by 2 this sign over here represents the remainder okay this percentage sign over here represents the remainder students if it were it was written like this num slash 2 equal to equal to then the answer okay then it is not remainder then we are talking about the quotient okay what if it is written num percent 2 then we will always what what whatever comes over here is the remainder okay so this symbol is for that this percentage symbol okay now now if number divided by 2 if the remainder is 0 then then the number is even or it uh, or if the remainder is not uh, 0 then it is not even or we can say that it is odd okay so what will be the third step if true print the number is even okay and in step 4 if false print number is not even okay students so let's talk about its flow chart see we are always starting with the start box okay then we will input the number inside the input output box or input box okay then we have a condition what is number this will have two answers either uh, one answer either one of answer out of the two if it can be true it can be false okay so if it is true the number is even the given number is even we should print the output okay if it is false the given number is not even or we can even write it is odd if it is false then it will come to stop if it is true then again it will come to stop i hope you understood these two flow uh, these three algorithms and flow charts okay students thank you for listening thank you for your attention uh, 
Take care of yourself and be well.